Hello, and welcome to The Witch Source, your source for magical empowerment. So this is Whitney. You guys have probably seen me uh, doing the live readings on the Facebook page. So look for The Witch Source on Facebook and you'll find us. Um, and I actually just got done with a live. And I have lots of stuff I need to do, but it dropped in that I needed to do this episode about the goddess. So even though I have lots to do, this dropped in. So like I always say, if you think it, do it. (laughs) Because that is the intuition, that is the guidance working. So here I am, I'm outside. And I want to talk to you guys about working with the goddess. Because I think there are several questions on that. Uh, And I think a lot of people actually (laughs) have grown up maybe more with a uh, patriarchal uh, deity system where, you know, you have God and the goddess really isn't a big aspect. So it's kind of a foreign concept to some people. Uh, I think it's a concept that's also can tend to create fear in people depending on how you were raised and you know, what you were taught to believe and what you have therefore chosen to believe. (laughs) But let me back up because I want to share with you my experience of working with the goddess. So I am outside also. So if a car goes by or you hear the birds, I apologize. (laughs) I think they're kind of loud, but so let's see. I first started working with the goddess not very strongly, but I just started asking questions about the goddess several years ago. I think I was like 19 or 20. And I just started pondering on the concept of there being a goddess. And so I asked, I just simply asked the universe I put out there, is there a goddess? And she responded. So I had asked, um, I was staying at my mom's house, And we were having some metaphysical, spiritual conversation. I'm blessed in the fact that while she was raised with a Christian background, at some point she remained open and spirit moved through her and opened her to more of the metaphysical aspect of spirituality. And um, that had a little bit of influence on me because she was very secretive about it. And when I was a child and growing up, it wasn't known. I didn't know that about her. (laughs) So, 1920, she kind of, she, by that point, she had opened up and we had, you know, started having conversations on spirit and, you know, all things metaphysical. And so I was at her house and we had been having conversation that night. And then it was that night before I went to bed that I asked, is there a goddess? And I woke up the next morning and there was sunlight coming through the cracks of the blinds and it was going right across my eyes. And as soon as I woke up and became conscious, I heard, come see me. And I was like, okay, this is intriguing. (laughs) And I was shown in a vision um, going into my mom's office. She had this beautiful uh, sunroom office area and it had a big, large ottoman um, and also a big comfy chair, but I was directed to sit in the ottoman. So I did and goddess started talking to me and I just stayed open to that possibility. So I heard, I am the goddess, yes I am real. And I started asking questions and she would answer, but as she would answer, uh, the wind would play in the trees and with every response, sunlight would go across my face. So I was sitting in a meditative space and had my eyes closed, but every time she answered, I could feel the sunlight and see it, you know, behind my eyelids dance across my face. And so that was my first real interaction with the goddess. And I just asked some general questions like, are you real? Do you exist? Um, Do you work with God? Uh, You know, is there an ultimate divine spirit, um, you know, that is kind of over you and God? And, you know, it was affirmative. So, you know, that was just my first real experience. Well, I kind of put it on the back burner, actually. (laughs) I did not 
dive more into it until much later, several years later, actually. I worked very closely and exclusively with God energy because I was uh, also raised Christian. And so I worked very exclusively with God energy for a long time. And then one day, the goddess just showed back up in my life. And I accepted her in and started working with her. So her energy, it just feels a little bit softer, unless she's showing her protective side. It feels a little bit uh, softer, not as um, authoritative as God energy to me uh, when she communicates with me. Um, She does still feel very authoritative. It's just in a softer manner, a more feminine manner, which she is the divine feminine, feminine. So, of course, that makes sense. But I started working with her and, you know, working with the goddess is very much like working with the divine masculine God energy as well. So I was very used to the practice of prayer because growing up, prayer was acceptable, of course. And that is, you know, talking to and communicating with uh, God and Jesus and that kind of energy. So I just took that same example that I was already familiar with and started applying it to how I worked with the goddess. It was actually very effective. So I would pray, ask questions, ask for signs, and she would work with me. And as I started to really open up and become more me um, and work on my healing, I asked the goddess to just come in and work with me and to really help me heal all areas of my life uh, that needed healing. And she did. And I could feel her moving and working around me. And things really started to shift and change and get better. And then as I dove more into uh, my magical practice with her, because magic's been um, something that I have done off and on, I would say since, uh, you know, early on, like, 12, 13 years old, I've been interested in toying with magic. And, you know, of course, I crafted and refined my skills and gained a lot of knowledge, did a lot of study. Um, But I started working with goddess energy when doing my magic, where before I was primarily working with source or god energy. So I started calling her in. And then I realized that I could go to a prayer place with goddess and say thanks to the effect of goddess, please help me with X, Y, Z. I I thank you. I give gratitude as I will it, so mote it be. And things started really happening when I started combining that powerful positive prayer work with ritual and talking to the goddess daily and calling on her daily. And she really has shown up uh, and giving me, given me signs. And I always go back to that first time that I questioned, is there a goddess? And she responded and let me know she was very real. So now I work with her pretty consistently and also God energy as well. And then it was revealed to me, um, this is my personal belief as it was revealed to me. And again, you can always take what works for you and leave what doesn't. But there is a divine source energy that is neither male nor female. It's just simply pure love energy. And then off of it branches a divine feminine and divine masculine, which is God and goddess. And then underneath that, um, you have all kinds of other deities, right? So then you've got like Buddha and Jesus and, uh, you know, all the different ones, all the different deities. You've got all kinds of uh, goddesses and gods all throughout history and in legends and myth and lore. And how it's been revealed to me is that there is the one divine masculine energy. There is the one uh, divine feminine energy. And these other deities get their energy through that source. So a lot of people question, you know, well, which goddess should I work with? And my response is, you don't have to choose. Just work with the goddess. Because ultimately, 
that is the energy that courses through any kind of deity that you choose to, to work with is either the god or goddess energy. So you don't have to pick a certain deity. Now, if a particular deity calls to you, I think there's a reason for that because you need to study what are the aspects of that particular goddess. What qualities does she possess? What energy does she possess? You know, what is her myth, her legend, her lore? What wisdom is there to be gained? What energy and knowledge can you borrow from those things, from those, those legends and lore, right? So that's where, you know, you start to break into other deities and how you can start to work with them. A lot of people will set up altars dedicated to certain deities. And that's fine. If it helps you tap into and work with their energy, you could certainly do that. But it's not necessary. You just talk to them. You meditate with them. And I often say in the lives, prayer is us speaking to the divine. Meditation is where we get still and we listen so that the divine can talk to us. So meditation is really key. It's very powerful. Um, if you listen to the Grounding, Centering, Connecting podcast, um, it will help you help walk you to that magical space where you can just sit and receive guidance. And the divine is always working, you know, for us and speaking to us through signs, messages, synchronicities, miracles, uh, answered prayer, all those things. You know, when our spells work and and we've dedicated that time and energy and intention and we've put that into our spell work and then everything passes into fruition you know it's from working with those divine energies so the goddess is is very real um she's available to work with anybody i think sometimes we run into difficulty or some people run into difficulty working with the goddess because they believe it's wrong because they've been taught that And I would just, you know, ask you to meditate on it and sit with it, you know, just to see what what feels right for you. Um, People that have not had a lot of feminine energy in their life might find it a little bit difficult to connect with a divine feminine energy. And that's okay. You can just simply ask, you know, can I work with you? Will you work with me? Um, do you exist? Show me a sign and pay attention because the signs will come. And if, if, you know, if you lack a really good role, role model uh, for divine feminine energy, let's say you didn't have um, a really good mother to show you an example, ask the goddess to be your mother. Let her fill you with her love and her light. Let her wrap you up in that light energy. And just being open and receptive, you'll feel it and you'll see the changes in your life as you start to just work with her and take your problems up to her, Um, you know, and your requests and your hopes and your dreams and your fears. She is willing to take all of those and transform and transmute and turn them into reality and help you Um, and guide you. So it's just a matter of being open, asking, and being willing, you know, to to receive. Um, Receiving is sometimes difficult for people, but give it a try, you know. That's the best I can offer as far as how to get started. Just ask if she's real. Ask if she's willing to work with you. Ask for a sign. And then pay attention, because it will be given. Um, There are several different aspects to that divine feminine energy. So if we think about feminine energy in general, it's typically receptive. So if you need help being more receptive in your life, being willing to accept your good and your worth and your value, working with the goddess can really help with that. Um, The divine feminine is also sometimes seen in some traditions um, with the maiden mother and crone aspect. So that maiden energy is that fresh, young, exuberant, 
childlike energy that is explorative and happy and playful. So if you've lost touch with some of that, some of some of that energy and your childlike nature and that want to play and and you know be magical and just let life open up for you, call in that divine feminine energy and ask to receive more of that childlike play and see what happens. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Then there's the mother aspect, which is all about teaching us, providing for us, being protective of us. This is also divine feminine energy. The goddess wants to provide for you, wants to mother you, wants to nurture you, wants to help you learn, help you grow, and also protect you, right? So you can tap into those aspects as well and and call in that part of the divine feminine energy. And then the last part, the crone, the crone is that old wise woman who has experience and knowledge, right? Knows how to provide solutions to any problem. So that divine feminine energy is available to you through that as well. So if you need help, if you need knowledge, if you need wisdom, if you want to dive more into your spirituality, if you want to dive more into magical practice and ritual, if you want to dive more into self-love and care and loving and accepting and embracing yourself, um, doing more things, spending more time uh, cultivating your spiritual energy and your, your spiritual life, call in that divine feminine energy, ask the goddess to help you, to provide for you, to show you the way, and she will, okay? It's all about learning how to receive, learning how to trust, learning how to open up, and learning how to ask for what it is that you need, because that's what we would typically do of our mothers. A, you know, that mother energy is there just waiting to be given to you, right? So you just open up and you accept and you ask and you will receive. I often say on the lives, if you're not calling on the divine, (laughs) like at least 150 times a day, then you're not doing it right. Because would, would a mother not want to help her child with anything and everything? Right? And sometimes there's lessons that have to be learned, yes. But those lessons can be learned in many different ways. And how we choose to learn the lessons is up to us. That can be as difficult or, or as easy as we want it to be. So if we, we want to learn, we want the wisdom, we want the knowledge without having to go through some of those hard experiences, ask, meditate. Connect with your soul. Connect your soul to that goddess energy and see what happens. Because she is there. She's available and she wants to work with you. Okay? So I hope that helps people um, and, and helps you to understand you don't have to select a deity. If one shows up in your life, then see what it's all about. See what that, that, um, that energy and that deity is all about. You know, some people choose to work with um, Aphrodite and Diana and Hecate, um, Athena, Mother Mary. Like, there's lots and lots and lots of options. Um, Kuan Yin, you know, there's, there's so many options, you guys. And if one shows up for you, just study, research. Try to pull in those qualities and those energies. But if no particular deity calls to you, please know that is okay. The goddess, just the goddess, <laughs> and I say just very lightly um, because she is extremely powerful um, and she's got a lot of love and energy um, that she can give to you to support you. So, but if you want to work with the goddess, that is there and available. So you can pray to her, you can speak with her, you can talk with her. Um, You can speak with her as you would a mother, a sister, a friend, um, a grandmother, right? That's kind of that crone energy, that grandmother energy, right? You know, our grandmothers, um, not not all, but typically there's an energy of, you know, spoiling us, 
The goddess wants to do that too. She wants, wants you to be joyous and happy, right? But that happens when you do your soul work and you love yourself and you really open up to the magic within you. So I hope that has been helpful. Of course, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. We do have the Witch Source Society Facebook group. Um, I'm pretty sure you can get access to it if you go to our Facebook page, The Witch Source. There should be a tab there um, that will get you access to the group and you can request to join the group. And we answer all kinds of questions in there. So feel free to get in there, ask questions. We'll be happy to answer. Um, I do hope that you'll like the page and follow. And then you can also get um, you know, notifications of when we go live. And that's always fun. I love the time that I get to go live and chit chat with all of you and answer questions and do your readings. It really is very enjoyable for me. Um, and also, you guys, don't forget, we have a YouTube channel you can subscribe to. That helps us out a lot as well. Please, if you've found this podcast on you know whatever device or uh, program that you're listening to, whether it's Pandora, Spotify, um, you know, Amazon podcast, Google podcast, Apple podcast. If you'll subscribe, that will get you a notifications to when we launch new podcasts. And we're also on Instagram. So we hope you'll follow us there. Um, also don't forget to check out the, the witch That's our website. You can find more podcasts there as well. And all of our products, readings, all lots of information available to you. So please feel free to check that out. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time.